So in this video we're going to be going over the uh, decimal to binary algorithm and uh, we're going to be looking at its implementation as a recursive algorithm and also its time complexity. So first of all let's remind ourselves uh, what exactly was a decimal to binary algorithm. So we learned the technique that if we wanted to convert a decimal number to its binary representation all we had to do is divide by 2 every time and uh, uh, keep the remainders. The remainders will basically give us the uh, the uh, the binary representation. So for example if we looked at number 26 in an earlier video we said that uh, when you divide by 2, 13, the remainder is 0. Divide 13 by 2 you would get 6, remainder is 1. Divide 6 by 2, 3, remainder is 0. 3 divided by 2, 1, 1, and 1 divided by 2 is 0 and you have 1 left. So as soon as you reach zero, you know that you're done, and this is basically your binary representation. This is the most significant bit, and this is the least significant bit. So 26 is 11010. Zero, one, zero. So this is the same algorithm that I just went through in pseudocode. So it's called decimal to binary. So while n is larger than 1, so our n here first will be 26, and while n is larger than 1, so uh, so long as we're above here. We're basically just going to print the remainder. So this gives us the remainder of the division of n by 2. And we're going to call the decimal to binary once more, but this time with the uh, uh, with half the n, just like we did here. So every time we took the half um, and we ran it again through the algorithm, through the uh, function decimal to binary, and kept the remainder. And the remainder gave us the binary representation. So um, if we wanted to get the time complexity of this algorithm, it would be as follows. Um, the time complexity would basically be represented by the number of bits we have. So because in the algorithm we have a print statement, the ultimate purpose of the algorithm is to print out the binary representation. So if we are going to print out, say, five bits, then that means we had to go through this five times so the complexity would be 5 in this case. Um, so we say here that the, the number of steps involved is proportional to the number of bits, which is um, m. Um, so let's assume that n was our number and the number of bits uh, that n required to be represented in binary is m. So basically this would be its representation, where for example if n was 26 and uh, we saw up there that the representation is 11010, one, one, right? So this would be 1 times 2 to the 4, right? 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, and 2 to the 4 right here. And this would be 1 times 2 to the 3 and so on until you reach the end where it's 0 times 2 to the 0. So this would be a representation. But now we're looking at the general case where we have a number n and we're trying to find m because as soon as we find m we're going to find the complexity. So let's try to uh, find lower bounds and upper bounds for this number m. Um, we know that n must be larger or equal to 2 to the m minus 1. 2 to the m minus 1 is just the first bit. So n, if it's to be represented with m bits, it means that it's always going to be larger than 1, 0, 0, and however many bits we need with the zeros. Okay, n will always be larger or equal to that. Because we said, we our assumption first was that we needed m bits. So therefore we needed exactly to have a 1 here. So n cannot be lower than that. Otherwise we won't need m bits. If it's lower than that, if m, n is actually less than 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, then that means we don't need this and it would be a number less than that where the first bit would be 0 and therefore we'd need m minus 1. So our original assumption was that we needed m bits and therefore we have to start with this one as being 1. So n would always be larger or equal to 1, 0, 0, 0. And this is basically what I'm representing here. So we'll continue this video in the second part.